Good evening. Tonight's exhibit is a picture of intrigue, and the reason you should always obey the safety warnings on a pneumatic nail gun in this offering entitled The Case of the Missing Carpenter, tonight in the Nut Gallery. I was kicking back with a bottle of the cheap stuff when I heard the click of heels on the walk outside. Times were leaned, and the sound was a welcome change from the dull whisper of dust settling on my keyboard. The siren song of a potential job and maybe a payday. With any luck, I'd be able to get my other pair of underwear out of hock at the laundry. And if things went really well, maybe I'd invest in a bottle of name brand cola instead of the store brand rock gut I'd been drinking. I slipped the bottle of soda into the desk drawer as the door swung open with a squeak and kicked my feet down off the desk, still a bit fuzzy from a week-long cola bender. From beneath the brim of my hat, I watched a pair of gams glide into the room on sensible shoes. Her skirt was cut below the knee, but my eyes were already making alterations as the hem disappeared beneath the edge of my desk. Good morning, Mr. Hummer. You are Mr. Hummer, aren't you? She said in a voice like an angel, just before some small town in the middle of a nondescript desert was turned to ash at a wind. Sweet as a tall glass of antifreeze with a hemlock back. I tipped my hat back, and her face matched her voice. I pointed to the peeling sign on the front of the door she'd just come in. Dick Hammer, private detective. I need someone found, Mr. Hammer. It's a matter of the utmost importance and some urgency. Are you available? That depends, I said. If this is divorce related, I'll need my fee in advance. I assure you, Mr. Hammer, that money is not an object. I can pay you 30 pieces of silver and then some. When can you start? I tipped my hat back again at the sound of a check being torn from its place in the checkbook. I could already smell the ink drying on the pay too long. It was made out to cash and the amount was blank. I could already taste the cool, sweet delight of name brand cola and a big bag of cheesy puffs lurking in my future. What's the job? I asked, my head still buzzing from bad cola and generic cigarettes. I want you to find a man, Mr. Hammer. I want you to find Jesus. Yeah, I've heard of him. If this is some sort of celebrity stalking thing, I don't do that sort of work. You'll have to take my word for it, Mr. Hammer. This is the most important thing you'll ever do. Find him, Mr. Hammer. Find Jesus. She passed me some pictures of a bearded guy in a dress. One of them was a zinger. Same guy, hanging from a tree. There was lots of blood. This was going to turn into a short job, and I was already dropping a bag of cheesy puffs for my cola fantasy. I'll see what I can find out, miss. What did you say your name was? A lot of miles, Mr. Hammer. My name is on the check. The name fit the face, too the check. It had a business card clipped to it. I had a man to find, but the man had an unusual name and an unmistakable face. Finding him should be a lead pipe cinch. It was my first celebrity job. Things were looking up. I started asking around in the usual places. Everyone recognized him but said that he'd left and nobody had any idea when he'd be back. An old woman mopping floors at the local bar said she'd seen his face on a cheese quesadilla once. She said she sold it on eBay for $800. That made me hungry. Not $800 hungry, but I headed down to the grill. Peter was cooking that night. I showed him the pics, but he said he didn't know him. So I dropped the pics on the counter and dug into the mound of greasy burger. The waitress said she was pretty sure he died a long while back. She poured me a refill on my coffee. She said she'd just made it. It was stale. I drank it anyway. She said he was a carpenter a long time ago that he died, but three days later he returned to life and hit the clubs for a while to say some last farewells to friends. She told me there was only one Jesus. That was something at least. I finished my fries over another cup of fresh made stale coffee and wandered down to the local hardware store. I said I was looking for a carpenter and the old man behind the counter told me that I'd missed him by about five minutes. I was getting closer. He told me that Jesus bought a hoe and was heading back to his shop. He reached up on the wall behind the counter and pulled down a yellow business card. Jesus had an address. The vision of name brand cola and cheesy puffs returned. There might even be a chocolate bar in it for me if this went as well as it seemed to be going. I wrote down the address. I figured that if Jesus had bought a hoe, he'd be busy for a while. I headed back to the office and waited. I hadn't taken my hat off when a couple of suits walked in. One of them was carrying a book. You were looking for Jesus, Mr. Hammer. I tossed the book on my desk. The cover looked painfully familiar. 
like the memory of a bad relationship that just won't go away. Everything you ever want to know is in this book, Miss Rammer. It is the only place you ever need to look when you have a question or personal need. I took a look through it. It hadn't changed much. Still the same stale, misprinted junk. Still the same perpetually unjustifiable personal cost. You need this book in your life, Mr. Hammer. It will bring you the prosperity you obviously seek. Sure, it has mistakes in it, but the cost of not including this book in your life are too dire to ignore. Uh, think about it, Mr. Hammer, and uh, do give us a call. Your life. Depends on it. I watched them leave with a certain relief. They made my gut squirm like something out of a cheap sci-fi flick. Antique agents of an obsolete era in history. Scavengers, feeding on the ignorant and ill informed. Scraping the last bits from the desiccated bones of those desperate enough to believe. Yellow Pages salesmen. Possibly the lowest form of life on earth next to politicians and lawyers. Time for me to find Jesus. It was getting chilly outside. I took my coat and double-checked my holster. I might need the backup if things got ugly. You never know when turn-by-turn -turn directions will come in handy. The bus was late, and the walk was long, but the hair on the back of my neck was bristling, and I knew from the start that there was a danger that nobody was following me. I had the sensation that eyes were watching other things, intently. When I found his place, the building reminded me of every other neatly kept wood frame Victorian I'd ever seen. It had the look of fresh paint, and the lawn looked like a magazine picture. The garage door was open, and a row of benches lined one wall. A man with long hair and a manicured beard stood at the bench. I waved a greeting, and he motioned for me to wait a moment. Give me a second, man. I gotta drill my new hole. If you don't, the handle comes loose. Then I tilt the blade, file one corner down. Better when you have to cut through roots. He slipped his safety goggles on and made quick work of setting two heavy pins in the neck of the ferrule, filed one corner, and then leaned hard on the handle, tipping the blade to a slight offset. I could see he was a man of particular habits and exacting personal standards. He loosened the vise and set the customized tool neatly in a rack. Are you Jesus? I asked. I've been sent to find you. I see you've been on the road a while. He passed me a can of soda from the small fridge in the corner. It was the good stuff. The can was ice cold and open with a satisfying pop. Jazz, but it's Panas Jesus. Can I help? I have a client with a sick rose bush. She needs a miracle. I pulled the last picture out of the stack. It was a gruesome sight. Dusty gray leaves and dry twigs. It looked hopeless. Everyone calls you the carpenter. So what's with the landscaping business? I asked. During that last real estate slump, people were looking for folks to fix up their houses, so I diversified. He barely glanced at the picture. Aphids and dusty mildew, he said without a moment's hesitation. Yeah, it looks like it's in bad shape, but I can bring back to life no problem. It needs a tobacco wash, a little sulfur dust. I can take care of that tomorrow afternoon. And that apple tree in the background. Don't eat the fruit from that tree. Original sin, I asked. Nah, <laughs> worms. I'll take care of that while I'm out there too. See how some of them have a little dimple in the side? I had no idea how he could have noticed that from a quick glance at the pic. I hadn't even noticed that there was an apple tree. I gave him the business card and thanked him for the soda. The sun had already begun to set, and I had just enough time to catch the last bus downtown before they stopped running for the night. I walked off into the fading light. I called the client and told her that I'd found Jesus. She was delighted. I pulled the last cigarette out of a wrinkled pack. It was bent, and my lighter was almost out of fluid. But I finally got it to light just before the bus rolled up. I went back to the office and opened a can of beans. I tossed the book on my desk aside and fell open to landscaping. And there he was. Full page ad. Jesus. The suits had been right all along.